Wake up, Homer. I was awake. Hello and welcome back to season six of the X Files Revisited. Ryan, we're back to the beginning. <laughs> we are. We're starting all over again. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we had the end before the beginning, so the end was the, yes. the last episode. And now, we're, yeah, now we're beginning. We have a very clear and definitive call, I think, to the fact that this is a new beginning. Essentially, it is the entire production moved to LA. We're no longer in Vancouver. Uh, I think you notice that right off the bat from a visual standpoint. We're now in mm-hmm. sunny locales rather than wet, rainy forests. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, we, we, we get a different cinematographer in the shape of Bill Rowe. So he takes over as director of photography from here on out. It, yeah, it just I feel like it gives the show a a slightly different flavor um we've got completely different dynamics with where the characters are at we get a new yeah. assistant director we'll get mm. more into him as the series mm. goes on uh yeah so it, it, it to to a large degree yeah it is it's 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 the beginning of a new era i think the x-files mm. movie kind of capped off the the first era and now we're we're in to a new era with the beginning. Yeah. So the X Files phase two. <laughs> phase two. But there really is three phases to the X Files. You've got a mm. yeah, phase two starts here. It ends with the second movie, I think. Um and then we well, please three. tell me one of the last seasons is called like Endgame or something. Which is funny. <laughs> We've already had an episode called Endgame. So yeah. So we have, um, yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah, here we are. Six seasons in. Uh, so I was putting together the th- thumbnails. So a bit before the start of w- it, when we're just about to start a new season, I, I put together all these thumbnails that you see behind us uh, for, for each episode. And in so doing, it kind of it forced me to to revisit, like, well, what episodes have we got coming up? What's what's coming up? Mm-hmm. That's, a, that's a really good one. Oh, that, that, that's a really – that's a re- – we were some bangers in this season. It's got to be said. Um, I think there's there's certainly a handful that may let it down, um, but we yeah we've got That's some bangers usual. coming up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you think we're going to have as consistent a season as we did with season five, or do you think there's going to be more peaks and troughs? I think there will be a few more troughs, but not. Not to the degree where it's like the X Files has kind of reached its peak yeah. and now that's it, it's going down. No, I I, I think there's no, going to be enough no, in this no, season. No, to... no fearful symmetry. Nothing. No, nothing, not, nothing, that. nothing to that. Nothing to that. There's a couple on here that it's been so long since I've seen. I literally cannot remember anything about them. Uh, there's one starring actor, John Hawks, that I don't remember being great. Okay. See that that's um, one thing I'm really interested in because mm, with a change of locale gets a change of actors. Are we mm, going to get more familiar faces rather than you know just the, the Canadian actors that maybe not be as well known? Yeah. I, I think there's a lot of actors in this. I mean, there always has been a lot of actors in X Files mm. where they've gone on to do pretty big things, but they got the start in X Files. You know, you think of like Giovanni Ribisi and Jack Black, Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's smaller scale actors like Pat Skipper, who you know is still gone on to do a lot of really amazing work as a character actor. Mm-hmm. Is a lot of people, a lot of big names that have made the start in X Files. But like you say, that, that that's that's your Vancouver kind of talent pool. Uh, now yeah. we're moving into like an LA kind of talent pool. Uh, your, your Hollywood kind of side of things, and there's a lot of actors that are going to show up here that one a big name even before X-Files. But two, I mean, next episode, we get Brian Cranston, and this is before Breaking Bad. So, you know, it's, yeah, we, mm. we've got a whole different talent pool, and I think it's, it, it, in certain areas, it's going to up up the game of the show, but we'll see. We'll have to see how it fares. Um, but, yeah, we, we're talking about the beginning today, first mm. episode of season six. This was the highest viewed episode of the season so 
the wow. the movie really did its job in bringing mm-hmm. a whole swathe of new people uh, on here. And and since we released our review of the movie, we've had quite a few people commenting that either the movie was the starting point for them or right. that they, they were an X-Files fan and they took a friend to see the movie who then became a fan of the show as a result of the movie. So certainly, it, it yeah, the, the show had an uptick as a result of that movie. But um, Interesting. Yeah. But do you care to guess where it sits in the IMDb ranking of all 217 <clears throat> episodes? Okay, let's go for 37. 37. Okay. What's he reasoning behind that? It's the first number that popped in my head. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's simply no reasoning. I, I, think, I, I think it's just a case that it's coming after the movie. Everybody's like... Oh, the X Files, yeah, it's coming back. And, I don't know. Okay, right. Well, you aimed a bit too high. It's actually eighty-three. Eighty-three. Oh, okay. Eighty-three. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into it. Uh, next time, maybe take a leak before we leave work. Okay, dipwads. We open up with some workers from Roush Technologies. Don't know if you remember Roush. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nope. No. No. You don't remember us talking about Roush? So this is... Um... <laughs> Why are you surprised? <laughs> I shouldn't be. I shouldn't be, really. So back when Scully had her cancer, Skinner did a little bit of detective work, and he came across some people that worked for Roush Technologies. If you remember, we were particularly uh, enamored by the fact that he was able to spell Roush correctly without even seeing the word. <laughs> Um, and he then he used that to find where Roush Technologies was, and it seemed to, it turned out to be like a, a, a an undercover like side company that, that was it was really a government front basically. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. So <clears throat> yeah, Roush Technologies group of group of guys they stopped for a pee, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> some rather amusing banter. And yeah. then they drop, <laughs> they drop off one of their team who looks seriously ill. And the next day, yeah. he's found by the team leader who has shown a little bit of douchebaggery about him, but maybe in a playful way. Mm-hmm. Um, but the team leader rocks up to the guy's house to pick him up, and the heating is, has been whacked way up. The dude was like feeling really cold, so he's put the heating way up. And he comes into the living room and finds his buddy sat on the couch, chilling. Oh, with a <laughs> massive hole right in the front of him. Uh, like yeah. something we've seen fairly recently in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, this is one of our alien friends that has literally burst forth from his body. Um, yeah, and yeah, I like that it's kind of continuing the story like straight on. It's going right into the mm-hmm. end. So if you're coming from the movie, you're just continuing straight into <clears throat> the, the mythology of this. I didn't see that coming. I wasn't sure what was going to happen uh, exactly, mm-hmm. but it was um, it was interesting to see come back to that. And it's very well shot, like the kind of very typical horror tropes. But yeah. at the same time, they're they're quite comforting. At the same yeah, time. yeah, so yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like this opening a lot. Yeah, it, it does have a really great kind of monster, slasher, stalker yeah. kind of feel to it, uh, which, which yeah. I do love. Um, and, and I do think Bill Rowe kind of does make a mark here with his cinematography. It's, it's mm. yeah, it's very cinematic. Qu- quite a brutal and bloody opening. Um, the, the, the guy gets yes. killed and it's, it's pretty gnarly. So we go from there to Mulder works at recovery of burned documents. So he sat yeah. literally painstakingly going through every and, and single... like like I've got to say, like this just felt a bit like, hey, look, I can magically fix everything. Like I know it's been burned to like ashes, but like I can I can <laughs> I can restore the entire X Files. Well, he d- he does say that you know he can he can restart enough to get some cases going again, uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, it, there's no way he's pulling all that lot back. Um, <laughs> just <laughs> I don't care what modern technology you've got; that's some of that stuff's just gone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so 
he faces a panel uh, very much like the one from the movie, only this feels yep. like a more budget version of them. We yeah. can't, can't afford to bring Blythe Danner back, so we'll go with a, a budget version of Blythe Danner. Um, so he faces the panel, and it's tells a, it, them... And it's a, sorry, it's, it's, I kind of like this one because it's like a recap of the movie plot. Yeah. For people that maybe missed the movie. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. We just tell you everything that's happened. I, I kind of yeah. like it because it's done in a... It's delivered in a tone where it is sounds ridiculous when someone's reiterating it to you. So you're saying this, 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 which is what happened, but in a tone that makes it yeah. sound so outlandishly stupid. I, I kind of liked it. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's just a little bit like uh, all the exposition that Mulder was giving in the bar and, and stuff like that. It's yeah. Like, Guys, can can we start with the exposition now? Okay, we we watched the show, we watched the movie. Okay, it's like we, we don't need this. I see your renowned arrogance has been left quite intact. So he tells them it is recovered enough to begin work on the X Files again. Scully enters just as Mulder defends what they saw in Antarctica. Yeah. Mulder builds up Scully for a scientific breakdown, sets her up to to knock down all their skittles. And Scully just goes quiet. <laughs> it, <laughs> yeah, this, this, this was hilarious. I, I thought, the way it's filmed as well, it's just, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you scientific irrefutable proof cut to, oh, God damn it, Scully, which is pretty much what it does. It's just, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, it's, man. It's, it's funny. It's, it's funny, so but it feels frustrating. Instantly, yeah. Scully's just like, I, I can't remember seeing anything. You're like, like <laughs> why didn't he pry her eyes open when she was passed out? In the yeah. On, at the very least, whip out his phone and start filming. <laughs> Imagine yeah. they didn't have video phones back then. <laughs> and even if he did, there would have been some strange alien interference that would have just made it yeah. grainy. Yeah. yeah. Then I lost nine minutes. <clears throat> okay. So Mulder is embarrassed. They're, they're out. They're walking in the corridor. Mulder's just like flat out embarrassed because... He was expecting like massive backup from Scully. She doesn't give it because Scully says, well, she's kind of changed the tune a little bit. She says that the virus breaks down proteins and blood cells, but it doesn't create new life. So, yeah, um, the, the, the idea that this thing was using bodies to, as uh, you know, to harvest and, 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 bring forth yeah. new alien beings is not a route she's willing to go down at this point, which, yeah, is, is a bit annoying. We go from there to the syndicate, uh, and Cancer Man fills them in on the attack by an Indian. Never underestimate the public's willingness to blame the Red Man for anything they can't explain. Yeah, the, the, the syndicate asks Cancer Man to dispose of the problem, the problem mm. being the fact that they now have one of these aliens on the loose, the vicious kind from the uh, you know that we saw in the movie. So I like how the balance of power here seems to be shifting a bit more to can Cancerman's got like a, a renewed sense of uh, oh, yeah. confidence about who's running the show here and how much power people have and stuff. Yeah, but he's <clears throat> he's never felt like part of the committee. Hmm. He's always felt like a, a kind of enforcer, almost. But it seems yeah. as if he's definitely starting to take more control. Yeah, that's 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 going to be a bit of a theme of this season, really. Especially when we get to the two-parter, two fathers, one son. That's the, the balance of power is really going to shift at that point. But um, yeah, I'm no help to you outside the majority, Agent Mulder. Inside or out, I don't see that there's a damn thing you can do for me. Skinner comes to tell Mulder that he's not being reassigned to the X Files. So mm -hmm. that whole thing at the at the end of the movie where we yeah. had the telegram and it says X Files reopened, please advise. Uh, it's not what we thought it was. The X Files has no. been reopened, but it's not Mulder and Scully that are running it. So and this this yeah. pissed me off, like really pissed me off yeah, because it, it, like, see 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 if I instantly went back to Mulder and Scully being in the X Files, mm -hmm. I'd probably have been annoyed and joking at it, going like, oh look, they're just back to the same old thing, they fixed everything yeah. in one episode, yeah. but now they're not in charge of the X Files. I'm equally annoyed because <laughs> I'm like, why the hell are they not back in the X Files? And there's yeah. not like yeah. I can't think of 
solution. I'm just either way, I'm going to be annoyed, Brian. Yeah. It's it's an it's an interesting dynamic, I think. It sets up a lot of conflict between various characters, especially when we find out who is actually in charge of them. Um and it's yeah, it's again, it's that whole new beginning thing. It's like, okay, we're back, but we're certainly not back to the status quo. Every everything's mm -hmm. kind of changed here. Um, mm -hmm. And I like that. I like the fact that they don't just, oh, we'll, we'll give you a movie, and then when we come back, everything's back, completely back to the way it was, as if the movie essentially didn't happen. No, we're yeah. addressing things specifically here that happened in the movie. That is the, the aliens. We're back with that. That's our main kind of point of conflict in the show. And the fact that, no, Mulder and Scully are still being pushed out. They're still not allowed to run the x-files so yeah it sets up the season and for, for what's to come quite nicely um but the big thing here is that um not only did they not get to run the x-files again but they were voted out by unanimous decision as skinner yeah. points out meaning he too voted against them getting back the x-files and like gut reaction here is is kind of at first it's like ah oh, why Skinner why but then he kind of explains himself uh, by yeah basically saying I can't help you outside of a majority vote it makes sense if like if Skinner mm -hmm. is the one vote that says no no let's put Mulder Scully back in then he's literally playing his hand he's telling. Mm -hmm all those that he works with, all those higher above him, that he's in Mulder and Scully's corner. But if he votes with the majority, then he can he can continue to help them on the sidelines without giving himself away too much. So anything mm -hmm. to add to that? No, I, I think, I mean, it's perfectly understandable. Um, and I think it's the wise choice to do. Yeah. Definitely. Although Mulder spits his dummy out about it a bit. He's kind of, of like, course. Uh, it, it always amazes that, uh, me that Mulder never sees the logic in things. Like he's, he's he never. Tries, I mean, <laughs> he is a master profiler. Like, mm. he, just, he just rarely sees the logic in people's decisions. Like if it, if it affects him in some way, then he's, he's, he's like Scully's the more logical one. She's the one who's more likely to say, okay, that makes sense. See what you've done there. Um, mm. but yeah, so as it happens, Skinner has left a file for Mulder in his old office. He goes to collect the file, but runs into Spender and Diana now out of a hospital bed and seemingly fully recovered. Um, and yeah, now in charge of the X files, Spender and uh, Diana, Diana. Yeah. Can go with that. That's, that's fine. Spender. I just don't like Spender. Right. I really no. just there's nothing I'm such about a weasel. <laughs> yes. Like every time he's on screen, I'm just like, oh God, I wish there was an alien bursting out of you. Or mm. just something. Like I just don't like him. Uh, but I think it's the like, Diana, I kind of like that idea. And I suppose when you think about Diana and Spender, you've got the, the person that believes in the X Files and mm. the skeptic uh, kind of yeah. swapped around a little bit. So Yeah, yeah. But then even Absolutely. more when you think into it, it's it's Cancer Man's doing. And uh, mm -hmm. he wants to put his pawn into the X Files that he can control yeah. more easily. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it, it, but, but right at the bat, you've just got conflict there because Mulder feels betrayed mm. by Diana. Um, you can look at depending on which Di which side of the fence Diana actually ends up being on. She's either doing Mulder a favor or yeah. she is stabbing him in the back. Um, yeah, is th there's a lot of a lot of room there for some really great kind of character dynamics and conflicts going forward. Yeah, um, so it's a great setup for the new season. Cancer Man smokes during a patient's open brain surgery. The patient, <laughs> <laughs> you always, I was almost waiting on them like flicking the ash into it <laughs> yes. on the brain. It's like you get it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, and and there's, there's a clear sign as well. A clear sign that says no smoking. So what does he do? He's like, lights up you, and then goes in. I'm kind of worried that they had to have that sign. <clears throat> this is an operating <laughs> theatre. <laughs> and that many people are smoking that they need to have a no smoking sign. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. 
It reminds me of a Broken Arrow quote. When it's like, uh, when it says, uh, oh, I, can't, I can't remember how it goes, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure I you don't know, know what's what I mean. more worrying. The fact that you've had, they have a name for this or the fact that it happens so often or something like that. Yeah, the, you know, the, fact, the fact that this has happened or the fact that it happens so often that you've got a name for it. Yeah, that's it. The patient that Cancer Man is smoking around, who, who's having open brain surgery, is none other than Gibson Praise, the young boy mm. from our last episode, the psychic. Um, he, yeah, the, the doctor seems quite concerned, but Cancer Man's just like, yeah, whatever, get him bandaged up and get him moving. <laughs> He's just like he's not. He doesn't even. He doesn't even care about him being bandaged up properly. He just he wants to find this alien that's on the yeah. loose, and this kid is his ticket to doing that. But so I love I love the doctor who is you know he's taking the Hippocratic oath. He's there to yeah. protect and to help people and to make sure that their health is primarily the, the main aspect. And uh, cancer man just goes, "It's him or us," and the guy's like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very much. Yeah. I don't think there's anything about this doctor that even remotely conveys the Hippocratic oath in all <laughs> no. its glory, uh, especially if he's working for Cancerman. So mm. Mulder and Scully enter the crime scene and they find claw marks. Yeah. Mulder and Scully, sorry, Mulder tells Scully his theory because he, he finds a literal claw. He pulls a claw yeah. out of the... Uh, out of the wall, and he tells Scully his theory that this isn't the red man, this isn't an Indian attack. He thinks this is a newborn of one of these aliens that he witnessed in Antarctica. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, you know, I don't believe it kind of creates new life. Yeah. It just breaks down tissue, so prove it. While they're talking inside, Cancer Man Gibson and a driver pull up outside Gibson says mm. it's not in there, gives Cancer Man the stare down when he challenges him. So really great moment. Can Cancer yeah. Man's like questions whether he's lying or not. Uh, and then uh, yeah, Gibson. What, what, I, what I really liked about this sequence is, and it's never mentioned, and it's just, I don't know if I'm projecting or if it was implied, but you get the idea that Gibson knows Mulder and Scully are there. He wants him mm. away mm. from there before he realizes it and he's already formulating a plan of escape, which yeah, yeah. I really and, and it's never mentioned. But that no, you get that it doesn't need to be. Yeah. yeah. It's it's all there on screen. You can see it. Yeah. And you you don't you do, yeah, you don't need it explaining to you. It's just yeah. he knows they're there. That's his his ticket out of there. It it's mm -hmm. not gonna be too hard for him to get away because like he says later, when you can read people's minds, you can get away from anyone. Yeah. Um, but but it is just his mind game uh, in which Gibson is king because he knows everything you, that's going on. Yeah, there. you can't play mind games with someone who can read your mind, plain and simple. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and he may be a kid, but when you've got that yeah. power, you're going to be well beyond your years because you've heard it all. Yeah. So out of Literally. out of the whole episode, this is like a really quick, almost nothing scene that has some amazing things going on in it, which I just yeah. I totally loved. Yeah, it's fully loaded. And and just mm. the fact that Gibson is staring down Cancer Man. He's staring down the big bad. And mm. he's got the ultimate poker face because he holds all the cards. And mm -hmm. you see how uncomfortable Gibson makes Cancer Man. Like even Cancer Man is, is he squirms a bit because he knows it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it is, it is a really great scene. What does it take for this thing to come up and bite you on the ass? I saw these creatures. I saw them burst to life. So as the car leaves, Mulder and Scully exit the house. Mulder tells Scully this time her science is wrong. You're just wrong, Scully. You're just wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's great. The proper child in, in Mulder is coming out in this episode. Yeah. So, uh, we go to the Rolling Hills nuclear power oh. plant. That is, this is so good. So <laughs> good. It's so good. It's run by none other than Homer. <laughs> yeah. Who's dozing at his station. <laughs> dozing at his station the way that Homer Simpson normally does. And it's just yeah. like, yes, it's such a great little uh, in joke. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Love it. Completely, Absolutely completely it. unnecessary, but just yeah. fun. <laughs> So Homer has to go check something out in one of the coolant tank things, uh, and he gets attacked. So, yeah, mm. Homer gets killed. Homer gets killed. 
the FBI and fire crews surround the plant in a really mm. kind of big budgety. Wow, don't we have more budget? Kind of yeah. like we're, thro- we're just throwing the money around here. Like, it's, it, yeah, it looks like a big operation. Big day on the on the the, the crew that day with yeah. rain shots and loads of fire trucks and cars and police cordons and all that. Like it, again, it just yeah, feels it's really such a cinematic. quick scene. Yeah, that, that yeah. Really, there's nothing. It's just a, a quick scene. And, and you you got to bear in mind as well, like, because they're now in Hollywood, they're shooting in Hollywood. Mm. They have access to all the stuff in the studios, 20th Century Fox studios and all that. Whereas yeah. back in Vancouver. They'd have had to have source that stuff. You know, a lot of a lot of stuff you have to source in a different way. But when you're working within the studio system, they've got so much on hand that they use for movies and things. Um, yeah. And because you're already there, you don't. It's not like you've got to. You don't have to travel. You don't have to to, to get all the crew on a plane, travel them over with all the gear and 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 bring yeah. stuff in. It's not. No, we're here. We've got our stuff. We bring it in. At least that's that's my way of uh, rationalizing it. I think uh, I think some mm. of that would would be involved, but yeah. So <clears throat> fire crews all surrounded the, the 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 plant along with the FBI. Mulder and Scully rock up, but Spender refuses to let them in. Uh, yeah. As as they leave, they find Gibson in the back seat of the car. Let us through. You are unauthorized to be here. Oh, you so want Mulder to just punch Spender in the face during this scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, Spender, as a character, is doing exactly what he is designed to do. But mm. God damn, I hate him. It's just like, there's no reason. There's no reason for him to be such a douchebag. It's just nope. like, he hates the X-Files. He hel- hates everything that Mulder stands for because it pertains to his mum. Um yeah. And he's just really sour about life. And he sees in Mulder almost a mirror image of himself in which Mulder reflects everything good and positive that he could be if he actually got off his ass and did some work. So we go go to a hotel room and Scully undresses Gibson's bandages. Um, and Gibson's like, Frankenstein? Really? Because <laughs> Scully's saying in her head, she tries to, yeah. to like, no, 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 it's fine. It's like, Scully... He's reading your mind. You know fully well he's yeah. reading your mind. Don't even try. So he tells them they were using him to find the alien. Scully convinces Mulder that they need to take him to the hospital for the X Files. For the X Files, Mulder. It's like, really, Scully? Really? <laughs> she's yeah, she just yeah. wants to get him to the hospital because she, you know, she genuinely wants to uh you know, mm-hmm. she, the mothering instinct is coming out. Or, uh, uh, but Scott, like Mulder's all for kind of like using him to to find the alien yeah. as well. So which Scully's I love like, because mm-hmm. it's, it's the cancer man's want to use him just to find the alien. Mulder mm-hmm. wants to use him just to find the alien. Like who's yeah. right and, and wrong here? They're both just as bad as each other, and I kind of like that that mm-hmm. thin line between good and evil yeah. almost. <clears throat> yeah, I mean the, the, that that thin line is obviously kept in check by the fact that Mulder is willing to listen to reason. Uh, and and in, begrudgingly, in this, <laughs> begrudgingly, yeah, yeah. But I, I just I love how uh, Scully plays to his weakness. That you know, get, mm. getting Gibson to the hospital and making sure that he's well is our best chance to save the X Files. So Diana rocks up, tells Mulder yeah. she took the X Files to make sure there was someone there serving his interests. They go yeah. to find then, the creature while Scully is left to take Gibson. Yeah. And did, did you get that little um, shiver down your spine when she's like, we're on the same team? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't trust you at all. No, no it, it's, it is. Re- I mean, it's the X-Files and we know from X-Files history that you should trust no one. Mm. But there's that side of me that wants to. <laughs> Yeah, there's like there's a side of me where I'm just like, not everyone can be in the thrall of the syndicate. Not everyone can have a double agenda where they're the 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 next crack check. It's it's like I want I want somebody to be more lone gunman esque rather than just mm. constant double crosser. So, see, I I don't know when I look at Diana, I don't know if I think she's in part of a conspiracy. But I definitely don't trust her, and I feel that she's out for her own ends. You know, she wants to like 
I don't know, something she, she may have some ulterior motive that may come forward later on or may not, but she definitely feels if she's uh, manipulating everybody she comes in contact with. Yeah, there's a certain coldness about her, a sort of yeah. stick up her ass quality where she's a poker face. She's got a constant poker face on her. That's the thing. She always mm. feels like she's very stern, very, very measured, very controlled, not really letting much out. Um, and it's, yeah, it's, it's that that makes me kind of just not trust her. You're not under the impression what we're looking for makes sense in any conventional way. No. Scully takes Gibson to hospital and he he gets a bit uppity about the fact that he's going to have tests done on him. You know, quite rightly, the poor kid's had enough tests done on him. Um, yeah. And he basically says that I'm a lab rat. And she's like, no, you're special. You're just special, Gibson. And he's like, I bet, yeah, I'm a very special lab rat. And that, <coughs> I don't know about you, but that kind of, was a bit of a I, hit to the crotch, but I think Gibson Gibson's an anomaly for me because every time he says something, I'm trying to figure out what he's up to because mm. I don't think always what he's saying is what's happening. So that may be somewhere in the back of Scully's mind, but I think he's pushing a protection from her by because she when she feels in that kind of corner, she becomes overprotective almost, and I think mm. he's trying to elicit that care. From her, right? Okay. Like, I don't think he's. I don't think that's ex entirely what she's thinking. I th I think that Scully is. She's got two sides to her, um, and I think yeah. both are at play here. One, it's the motherly thing. I genuinely think she got him to the hospital to take care of him. Yeah. Two, there is there is still that scientific curiosity about him. Like, there's no way, given her scientific background, that she could not be curious about him and be. Mm her head would be filled with all manner of questions. And I think Gibson's going to hear those questions. And, and there is going to be a bit, there's going to be something about him that is sour, you know, like e yeah. even to the most caring of people. If you like, I don't care who you are, but if you're the most caring person on this planet, if somebody could hear your thoughts, they're gonna they're gonna hear things that's gonna make them think that maybe they're not as yeah. caring as I would like to believe. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are. So and so I do think I do think here he's he's tired of being tested on. He's tired of being pushed from pillar to post, moved here, moved there, doctors this, doctors that, and it's just like you know. And and he yeah he trusts Scully. Yeah he knows she cares, but ultimately she is a doctor. She is a scientist, mm -hmm. and it's like he's he's sick of it. He's just sick of doing this 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 merry dance, um, mm -hmm. which is completely understandable. It's just we don't yeah. want to feel like Scully is a part of that because we know she's a caring person. But but also by saying this, he's kind of going to push her to adversely not do that as well because he's probably sick fed up of all the tests mm. and proddings. Yeah. And I just feel like he's because he knows what everybody knows he's very manipulative in what he does yeah 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 so Mulder and diana break into the nuclear power plant Mulder pulls out an alien skin from the cooling system which begs the question why wasn't this found earlier because this so this is this is where homer got killed so yeah. surely that's a crime scene so you know and, and there's still <laughs> what, so. what appears yeah, there's still what appears to be like blood on the floor, presumably from Homer, or I don't know. Maybe it's from when the alien shed its skin. It's hard to tell. Right. I've got a little bit of a bugbear here. Looks organic. Maybe somebody's got the flu. How come whenever there is like a pile of goo or crap on the ground, someone has to stick their fingers in it? What <laughs> compulsion do they have? Where they're like, I have no idea what this substance is. I'm sticking my fingers in yeah. that. Yeah. And then no, they like my, to do my this thing where they're like kicks the in on that. I'm just like, yeah, no, I, there's no way I'm touching that stuff. Uh, my, I've got like sensory processing disorder. There's no way. It's like any, anything yeah, that looks good. They touch it and they go, hmm, good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just find it quite weird that, you know, a man has been killed in there. Crews have gone in, they've cleaned up the body, and mm. yet they've left this alien skin behind. Now, admittedly, the alien skin, they could have come in, cleaned up the body, 
and then the alien could have shed its skin. But it yeah. seems to be, you know, it's, it's in the exact same place where Homer was killed. It seems, Although, it seems again, to be. It, yeah, but admittedly, that's where the alien was hiding, and it's hiding there for a reason, which is the heat. So, yeah, one could assume that uh, this is this is my problem. I don't want to be doing these mental gymnastics while I'm watching yeah. it. I don't want to be thinking, hang on. So, so he, he went there, and and that went there, and what? Well, I, I just want to be watching the episode. So, my, my my theory is Homer's gone in, he's got killed. Then the FBI ones come in, they've taken the body, cleaned it up while the aliens hid, uh, and then when they've all cleared out, that's when it shed its skin. Uh, Scully rings, causing Mulder to to brick it once more, which I feel like, oh, we did that in the movie. Let's do it again. Because it's, it's not yeah. quite as effective here, I don't think, but it's 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 just funny that they've, they've just used the same gag twice within the space of light. Mm. Yeah. Um, so she tells him that the alien virus is in Gibson's blood, that it's literally part of his very being, um, mm. which suggests that it could be part of all of our very being. Yeah. Uh, so... A man appears in Gibson's room, one of those dodgy hitmen that's on the books for yeah. Cancer Man. Mm -hmm. It's just got Which that just feels, completely... It feels odd because um, this seemed like one of the busiest hospitals we've ever been in. It's like rammed with people. But then <laughs> all of a sudden he just appears. Yeah. Well, Scully's on the phone. Yeah. Scully goes off on the doctors when she finds Gibson missing. She's like proper, yeah. she ain't happy at all, mm -hmm. which is understandable. Uh, Gibson is being driven in an ambulance. And yeah, Mo not really to say about that. He's, he's being driven in an ambulance. There you go. Yeah. Mulder and Diana are creeping around the power plant when the man rocks up with Gibson, using him to find the alien. Uh, Gibson takes him into a room where the alien kills the man. Mulder watches through the, the door panel. Um, the alarm starts to sound, and then Diana pulls her gun on him as if to arrest him. Uh, Mulder mm. looks back through the panel once more, and there's no sign of Gibson or the alien. Yeah. yeah. yeah Gibson I'm not sure where they're going to go. Because... Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. like it's, Gibson don't trust him. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah. yeah, and he's he's a smart kid, and he's he's definitely beyond his years. He's experienced oh, yeah. death in many facets. Um, I, yeah, I just think this this is kill or be killed at this point. Is is very logical person? Yeah. At, at this point, given everything he's heard and seen in people's heads, he knows what that guy was there to do. He knows that. There's only one outcome for, for him if mm -hmm. that guy is left to, to live. And, uh, yeah, the, the thing here, again, you've got Diana. Like, is is she arresting him to cover up the fact that she was there with him? Or, yeah. or is, you know, was this always part of the plan? Was she really there to, to make sure that Mulder didn't get to where he was trying to get to? And that the other, yeah. yeah. So, to me, it looks mostly like she's doing it for Mulder at this point. Whether Mulder thinks that, although, is is a different matter. Like, I feel like there's a bit of a look between them. Like, it's, yeah, okay, I get it. And then he just turns around and carries on banging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, unfulfilling, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I'd have liked to have at least seen the alien fully do this guy in. I don't know if that's just the, the <laughs> sick, twisted side of me, but, it, it like, yeah. It would have yeah. just been nice to see a final attack, just to just to get the <laughs> adrenaline pull, pumping and be like, whoa, man, that's full on, like, yeah, but no. You and Agent Scully will cease all material association with the X-Files. Refusal to do so will end in immediate dismissal. In a hearing, Mulder and Scully are banned from the X-Files and will now report to Assistant Director Kirsch. Oh, Kirsch. Yeah. Kirsch, yes. Kirsch uh, one of my least favorite characters on the show. I cannot stand this guy. I instantly dislike him, Brian. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Like it literally from 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 the moment he comes in, he is just the most dislikable, unlikable character. That yeah, it's like he goes out of his way to be a douchebag. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Like Spender, as douchey as he is, I have a, I have some slight understanding of where that comes from. You know, he yeah. he, he he didn't want Mulder getting involved with his mum, and Mulder did. And as a result, his 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 mum ended up going through stuff. Um mm. he yeah. So at the very least, I I, I can see where Spender's douchebaggery is coming from. Whereas with Kirsch, it's literally just a power thing. Mm. I don't like you, Mulder. I don't like you, Scully, because you work with Mulder, and I'm just going to make your life a misery as best I can. Spender gets a visit from Cancer Man, who tells him that breaking a man's spirit is a beautiful thing to see. A nice father-son bonding moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. It's just, yeah. When that guy's your dad, you got no chance of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those father-son talks are incredible. <laughs> oh. oh, good grief. So Mulder continues to recover his files. Scully mm. arrives and gets into a debate about the trustworthiness of Diana. She tells Mulder to trust her instead. Yeah. Then she shows him the evidence that supports all of humanity might be the remnant of aliens. So that's, uh, yeah. Okay, Scully, now that you've found that, can you please get your ass back into that office where that, that panel was and yeah. take that to them? Because at the start mm. of the episode, you were all like, nah, it's just a virus. Just just an early virus that breaks things down. And now you're saying, oh, actually, maybe the remnant of an alien thing that, that's now yeah. in all of us. Back at the plant, the chest burster turns into an alien grey. Yeah. Uh, while, while Gibson hides in the rafters. So, yeah, that's that's an interesting development, I think. Just this, this oh, whole yeah. notion... That, so the whole time we've been thinking, you've got the alien greys, you've got the bounty hunters, you've got these new this, this new alien race that's come along, and it's like, oh no, mm. this the, the new alien race is actually just the newborn version of the alien greys. So it's all consistent. Mm. It's all within continuity, within context. It's yeah, boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good Final finish. Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I I like this. Um, as a continuation of the movie, it's a decent episode. It's not one of the strongest opening episodes mm, to any season no. by far. No. Um, and there's certain aspects that just annoy me, but it's not like it's it's character moments, it's story plot points. It's not anything that the episode does wrong. It's just things that I don't like. Mm. I don't like that they're yeah. not back in the X-Files. I don't <laughs> like Bender. Um, you know, don't like Kirsch. <laughs> yeah, I don't like Kirsch. Uh, again, that's just me, but that's the episode doing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's just, it doesn't feel to expand anything. It's just a kind of sure footing step into this season, bridging mm -hmm. the movie and the TV show. And mm -hmm. to be honest, it would be really hard to make a, a terrific episode while bridging these two things. I think, you know, it's, it's yeah. solid, does everything right. For me, it's a decent <clears throat> four out of five. Yeah, I I go with a four out of five. There are some elements where I'm just like, really, and you know, just uh, certain lines of dialogue where I'm like, you don't you don't need to explain that to us in in that way. We've seen it, we know. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, as as a season opener goes, it sets out the stall. It puts our main characters in a completely different kind of situation to what we used to seeing them in, which kind of allows us to think, okay, where are they going to go with this? They, you know, they, there's a whole mm. setup here that means they've got they've got the rest of the season to deal with it. Um, and, and I like it when they do that. You know, like the, the start of last season, we started with a switcheroo between Mulder not believing, Scully believing, and Scully yeah. also kind of, you know, dealing with the aftermath of, of cancer and that. And that kind of fed through the entire season um, and got wrapped up. In, you know, but certainly by the movie. Now mm -hmm. we, we need something else. Well, what is that something else? Well, something else is there's a lot more cooks 
in the kitchen right now, and none of them seem to be on Mulder and Scully's side, uh, which is the last thing they need when when they're not even they've not even got the X Files to 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 help them. So yeah, good setup, but like you say, very frustrating because Mulder and Scully are my guys. I want you know I yeah. want everything to be right for them, and right now it really isn't. Uh, four out of five from me. Could be better, could be much, much worse, but oh. yeah, there you go. Yeah, completely agree. So tell me a little bit about episode two, Drive. I think we're going to love this one. I, I, I'm i guessing this is going to be a five-star episode, to be honest. Okay. Um, it's got guest star Brian Cranston before Breaking Bad Days. Uh, it's written, written by Vince Gilligan, who obviously created mm-hmm. Breaking Bad. So I feel like this is where he kind of got his star, essentially. You know, if you if you want to thank anyone for mm-hmm. for 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 Breaking Bad and, and, and the Brian Cranston connection, then thank the X Files because yeah, I, I think this show brought the two of those gentlemen together for the first time but yeah i I just think it's think the movie speed but as an (laughs) x-file sounds interesting yeah Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. okay so well i'm kind of looking forward to that i'm interested to see cranston um, Mm -hmm. because i'm always curious to see what he appears in so that'll be Fun. Yeah. So as always, you know, thanks to everyone for joining us as we talked about the start of season six. Uh, review us on any podcast service. Hit a like on YouTube if you watch us there. It's all appreciated and helps us out. And you can join us next episode for Drive. Thanks for watching. <laughs>